If I was to start my fat loss journey today, what would I do? This video is in response to a comment I received on a recent video from EP1929, who mentioned that he wants to lose 40 pounds, but he's not sure where to start. First of all, props to you, my man, for first identifying the goal that you want to achieve and not being afraid to ask for help, especially from people who have experience, who have achieved the fat loss goal that you're aiming for, and more important, they've kept the fat off. Now, if you're not familiar with my backstory, 12 years ago, I lost 50 pounds of fat. Then I spent the next five years going through some bulking and cutting phases. The muscle building phase would last about seven months. I'd gain between 20 and 30 pounds. Then I spent the next three to four months in a cutting phase to strip off the excess fat. For the past seven years, I've gone through more lengthy muscle building phases that last about 11 months, uh, where I only gained between seven and 10 pounds, so I stayed lean during that muscle building process, and then I only have to spend about two to four weeks in a mini cut in order to strip off that excess fat. I've learned a great deal from those experiences, in addition to my 24 years of coaching experience, where I've helped countless men and women totally transform their bodies. And through these experiences, I've identified three steps to success. Number one is to recognize that this is a process. It's really a journey of self-growth more than anything. And when growth occurs, challenges is always present. You can't grow without facing challenges. So the first thing I want you to do is to identify some potential challenges that you may face during this process here. So maybe your challenge is nighttime snacking. What can you do to handle those situations a little bit better that's going to serve you best. Maybe have a, a lower calorie snack that you're going to enjoy. Maybe it's higher protein, like some hard boiled eggs, beef jerky, maybe some smoked salmon slices. Or maybe you are really great during the week, you're not tempted with late night snacking, you nail the week, but it's the weekends that challenge you. So what can you do to create more structure and routine in your weekends so you can stick to your plan there? Or maybe it's just temptations in the office. Maybe there's donuts in the, the, the staff room and you just are faced with that temptation every single day. Or maybe you're like Manny who um, his family doesn't share the same goals as him and he's faced with temptations in the house all the time because his family loves to enjoy ice cream, cookies, chips, and all those other great snacks. So what is, what, how are you going to handle those challenges in a way that's going to serve you best? Now, that is a video in and of itself. I have recorded many videos on that topic in the past. I will continue to record many more videos on that topic because it, it is so, so important. I think it's really is the, the key to your, not only achieving your goal, but to your long-term success. This is really where the learning and growing occurs. So what I want you to take from this aspect in this video right now is that you will face challenges and I don't want you to feel frustrated or get stressed out when you do face them. I really want you to get excited when you face those challenges because again, growth will not occur unless you are faced with challenges. So this is your opportunity to learn and grow. This is your opportunity to recognize that like you're thinking ahead, these are the potential challenges that I may face and formulate a plan of action for how you're going to tackle that challenge. And if you do happen to execute that plan to the best of your abilities, celebrate that success, really make note of what worked. So when you're faced with that challenge again, cause you will be faced with that challenge again, you will be more, even more prepared than, than this first time here. Maybe you aren't successful with that challenge, it's okay, it's natural, it's human nature. I don't want you to beat yourself up. I don't want you to feel guilty or defeated. Again, I want you to get excited because this is your opportunity to learn and grow. What can you learn from this experience? Why did you not, why were you not able to execute the plan to your best of your abilities? How can you improve the next time? And if you do this, you take that action to identify where things kind of went wrong and how you can improve, that's a victory in itself that, that should be celebrated. So that's the key takeaway that I want you to take from step one uh, in this video here today. Now, step number two is to identify your goal, which you have, uh, you wanna lose 40 pounds of fat, uh, and then work yourself backwards from there. So uh, what is going to be in your best interest? What's going to suit you best when it comes to how much weight you wanna lose per week? Let's say maybe it's two pounds per week. You got 40 pounds that you wanna lose. That's gonna take you 20 weeks to achieve this goal. So we're looking at five months uh, to achieve your 40 pounds of fat loss. We're gonna take in a nice, fairly aggressive, but still doable, um, very attainable goal that you're setting for yourself here. So um, again, what's good? So working ourselves backwards, two pounds per week. What's it going to take to lose two pounds per week? So general rule of thumb is you want to lose one pound, you want to create a 500 calorie deficit. If you want to lose two pounds, you're going to want to create a thousand calorie deficit. 
per day. So how do we determine that? I'm gonna include a link down below in the description to a calculator on my website where you enter your age, height, weight, your activity level. That's gonna give you your TDEE, your total daily energy expenditure. That's how many calories you'll burn per day just to maintain your weight. This is just a general estimate here. We're gonna to have to really pay attention to your body's feedback as we're going along and make some adjustments based on that feedback. Uh, so that's your maintenance level calories. You're, you're gonna want to create a thousand calorie deficit from that, so you're gonna subtract a thousand. So let's say your maintenance level, your TDEE is 3000 calories. You're gonna subtract a thousand from that. You wanna to try to hit 2000 calories per day. I'd prefer that you are consistent on a daily basis. It's just gonna make things a lot easier to manage. You're gonna, you're gonna have less ups and downs in the scale weight and everything. It's just gonna keep some consistency and routine in this, uh, the process that you're going through here. But if you do happen to go 200 calories over one day, it's okay, you can make up for it the next day. Just eat 200 calories less the next day, or maybe 100 less the next day and 100 less the next day. So it's not too big of a difference there. So when it comes to fat loss, I want you thinking on a weekly, basis. So if it's 2000 calories per day, you're really looking at creating, looking at 14,000 calories for the week. So you have some room, you can have some ups and downs. It doesn't have to be perfect 2000 each and every day, as long as you're hitting 14,000 calories for the week. But again, I prefer consistency. I think that uh, really sets up a lot of people for great success in, in the long term. But again, if you go over, don't beat yourself up. You can always make up for it um, throughout the, the rest of the week to hit your 14,000 calorie target. So from there, you know, you're going to aim for 2000 calories per day. So now create a meal plan based on the foods that you enjoy and the meals that you enjoy. So why don't you try to keep things as simple and structured as possible. For myself personally, I have a breakfast shake each and every day, which has one cup of homemade kefir, one cup of unsweetened vanilla cashew milk, an ass load of spinach, a banana, a scoop of protein powder. My second meal is four free range eggs from my friend's local farm, some mixed veggies in there. Uh, in the bowl, I have two third cup of oats, 140 grams of frozen mixed berries. My third meal, always post work workout, uh, 260 grams of Greek yogurt and 140 grams of mixed berries. Dinner, I get a little bit of variety, but I have like probably like six, seven go-to meals that I have frequently. I love having some salmon. I usually have fish like three times a week. Most of the time it is salmon. Sometimes it's rainbow trout. Sometimes it's tuna steak. I'll have a starchy carb and a veggie with that. So whether it's rice or a sweet potato um, and the veggie might be like big Brussels sprouts, steamed asparagus, peppers, uh, whatever. It's a, a mix in there. So it's, it's pretty standard and I'll have that about three times per week. Uh, another time I'll have like a chicken fajita bowl. I absolutely love that flavor. So rice, usually pepper, uh, and some chicken with some fajita seasoning in there. Another day I might have something that involves like ground beef. Uh, maybe it might be chili. I love chili. I have that quite a bit as well. But pork, another one is like breaded pork chops, little uh, pork cutlets there with again a starchy carb, maybe a yellow potato and some veggies there. So I have certain go-to meals and I keep that simple structure. It just makes it mindless and effortless for me. And when it comes to tracking, so we're talking calories here, which can be a little bit overwhelming to some people, when you have structured meals in your diet, you record that meal once, you save it as a meal. It just becomes easy and effortless. You don't have to punch in all the different ingredients each and every time you save it as a meal you're golden from, from there on out. Yes, there's gonna be some meals that are gonna be a little bit more difficult to track. If you're making a, a family meal, maybe something like shepherd's pie, which has a, a bunch of ground beef, maybe a pound or two pounds of ground beef in there, and maybe two to four pounds of potato in there. And then it's gonna be very difficult to know exactly what your portion size is. You're just gonna try and make your best educated guess as possible. We're just trying to keep things, we're trying to take out as much of the guesswork as we possibly can. So again, don't turn that into a stressor when it comes to tracking your calories, trying to keep it as simple as possible by having that simple structure into your diet. Um, it's gonna make things a lot easier. So from this point right here, I want you to focus on nailing the daily process. Yes, you have your long-term goal, the 40 pounds of fat that you wanna lose. It's in the back of your mind there, but I don't want you, it can be daunting if you're thinking about, man, I got, when am I gonna ever lose this 40 pounds of fat? Like that can be exhausting for you. It can seem like it's never going to happen. So just focus on nailing the daily task, hitting your daily calorie target. And again, like I said, if you go a little bit up, you can adjust for it and really trying to lose that two pounds per week. If you find that you're not quite hitting that two pounds of fat loss per week, then you just adjust your intake. You mean you need to consume 1900 calories instead of the 2000. Again, these calorie, these are just 
estimates to work with. You gotta listen to your body's feedback in order to really continue to make progress there. Now, when it comes to your activities, again, try to keep some structure in there. What's going to suit you best? How many workouts per week are gonna serve you best? What activities do you want to incorporate into your lifestyle? Um, uh, not, not just now, and this goes for your, your diet as well. Like I mentioned, I want you incorporating foods and meals that you absolutely love. So when you lose this 40 pounds of fat, you're gonna continue eating these same meals. They're meals that you look forward to eating all the time. It's just going to be the portion size they're going to increase. And maybe you have a little bit more room to have a treat here and there if you want to, but it's really just portion sizes. How you eat now when you're losing fat is gonna be very much how you're going to eat down the road. So really working with your own natural eating tendencies, trying to improve upon your own natural eating tendencies. And when it comes to your weight training, again, don't try to like beat yourself down into the ground while you're losing this 40 pounds of fat. How you, your active lifestyle when you're trying to lose fat should be exactly the same as when you're trying to maintain your weight or build muscle. So if you want to work out four days per week, now you'd work out four days per week later. If you want to, if you enjoy some cardio, how many days per week serves you best? What type of cardio serves you, serves you best? Maybe you don't want to do cardio, you just want to live an active lifestyle, playing some sports, maybe you get out in the paddleboard, maybe just walking, just designing your lifestyle in a way that suits you best. There's no best activities to burn fat, there's no best diet to burn fat, there's just you designing your lifestyle in a way that's going to suit you best. So. Again, structuring in your nutrition, structuring in your workouts, structuring in your sleep. This is absolutely key. When it comes to keeping your energy levels up, keeping your mood elevated, uh, and controlling your appetite, so many different factors, so many things are involved when it comes to getting an adequate amount of quality sleep each and every night. So I highly recommend you make that your top number one priority. There is a lot to go through here. I highly recommend you download the free guide, Lose Fat, Get Jack. It's gonna walk you step by step through all this process. So you can either watch this video again, and you can do so while kind of reading through the guide as well and following the template there. Now, step number three is accountability. This has been absolutely huge for myself personally. Whenever I am going through a cutting phase, I like to share my goal with my, with a, whether it's in the Lose Fat Get Jack inner circle or on in Facebook in general, with friends, with colleagues. Um, I let them know not just the, the goal that I want to achieve, the end goal, but the daily goals that I want, that want to achieve. So I want to hold myself accountable to the daily tasks that are going to get me to my goal. So again, you can either hook up with a friend, a family member who may be going through a similar process as you, or, or join an online community, something like the Loose Fat Get Jacked Inner Circle, where we can hold you um, accountable to those daily tasks. You're, you're really surrounding yourself with like-minded men and women who are goal-driven, who have your back, who are going to not only be sharing what's working for them, but also seeking your help. Like you, well, I think one of the best things to, to, to grow, the best things for, for success is not only learning how to transform your body, but teaching others to do the same. So as you are learning, don't be afraid to help others through the process because that's just gonna help it sink in more and more. So when you're sharing your experiences, not only asking for help, but sharing the many victories that you're experiencing within a community like the Lose Fat Get Jacked Inner Circle, it's gonna help solidify this new routine, this new life, this new habit that you are forming here. So I uh, highly encourage you to, to build some accountability. There's nothing like it when it comes to achieving your goal. So if you have any more questions, of course, feel free to reach out to me, drop them in the comment down below. Again, I highly recommend you download the free guide, Lose Fat, Get Jack. It's gonna walk you step-by-step step throughout this entire process, but I really hope you found value in today's video maybe a little longer than I was expecting it to be, but uh, there's a lot that goes into this. And this is exactly what I would do if I was starting my fat loss journey today. This is based on everything I've learned through the past 12 years of me going through these, this, like losing the 50 pounds, going through most bulking and cutting phases there. Um, and again, the 24 years of coaching experience. This is, this is an accumulation. These three steps are absolutely key to your success. So I hope you found value in it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please do me a huge favor and smash that thumbs up button. It'd really mean a lot to me. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that alert button so you're notified each time I upload a video. And don't be afraid to let me know, like, EP 1929, this is a great topic idea for a video here. So if you have any topics that you would like me to cover, Manny was another one who mentioned that he had 
the, the challenge with his, his family, not having the same goals as him. There's always uh, junk food in the house. How can he handle it? So that's going to be an upcoming video that I'm going to address. So if you have any topics that you want to make to, to cover in future videos, be sure to drop a comment down below. Uh, more than anything, again, I would love to hear from you. Like, what are your thoughts, your feedback, your insights from this, any questions that you may have, share them down below. Hope you have yourself an amazing day. I'll catch you in the next video.